And now, time for something just a little bit different. to talk about one of my favorite subjects in film, universal horror. What is universal horror, you may ask? If you're younger than 30 and don't have a clue what I'm talking about, universal horror is a film franchise that lasted from the very movie I'm talking about today, 1931's Dracula, all the way up to 1956's Revenge of the Creature. Now, I will admit it is kind of debatable when exactly it starts and ends, as quite a few people f include the 1925 film adaption of The Phantom of the Opera with Lon Chaney Sr. as the true beginning, while I personally kind of consider 1948's Abner Costello meet Frankenstein as kind of the end, since most of the 1950s is just the Creature of the Black Lagoon films which never really felt part of this, but I guess it is, and the other Abbott and Costello monster films. But I'm kind of getting off topic. For most people, Dracula is where it really began. I wonder how much history would be changed if things went the way they almost did. Now, you need to understand, in 1931, sound films were still kind of a brand new thing. So a lot of the biggest stars in Hollywood at the time were still in a transition period at this point. One of those actors was Lon Chaney Sr., otherwise known as the Man with a Thousand Faces. He was in lots of films in the 20s and was a super multi-talented man, but most definitely remembered best today for appearing in films like, once again, The Phantom of the Opera, Hunchback of Notre Dame, and the sadly lost film London After Midnight. I mean, just look at these photos. It would have been amazing to see. I want to reiterate that Chaney Sr. was not just a horror actor. But it must be said that the main reason Dracula went into production in the first place was because of this man's talent. Surely this film will bring in the big bucks. Sadly, after only appearing in one sound film, Lon Chaney passed away of lung cancer on August 26th, 1930. Now if you know your dates, you will know that Dracula was released mostly on Valentine's Day 1931. So the studio definitely did not dwell too long on losing Chaney to get Dracula made. Bela Lugosi, best known at the time for the stage play version of Dracula, was not wanted by Universal until he offered to do the production for a lot less money than he would honestly was worth. And that was history. Todd Browning is more or less credited with directing this film. He had directed Chaney a few times before, and it was definitely a good choice, but it said that he didn't do much directing at all for some reason. I haven't found a reason why, but according to what I could find, he was usually a very competent and talented director. He was just depressed or something during his production and didn't do much. Carl Freud, I hope I said that right, the cameraman and not just a cameraman as he pioneered a lot of modern film techniques and had a long career, is said to have done most of the directing work uncredited. Todd Browning the next year would direct the film Freaks, which was so controversial at the time that it basically destroyed his career, and you better bet your ass we will be talking about that film sooner than later. The other two actors I want to talk about in detail are Edward Van Sloan as Van Helsing and Dwight Fry as Renfield. They both have a similar cheesy quality about them I love. By the sequel, Dracula's Daughter, where Van Sloan is the only returning cast member, you can kind of tell that he grew quite a bit as an actor by then. But notice how of everyone, I haven't talked about the male lead yet. He must be new to Universal Horror. In almost any Universal Horror film from the period, besides like the wolf band where the main character really is the monster, and just a few exceptions, the male lead is fucking worthless. Believe me, you're going to see this a lot. All he does in this movie is mope and bitch and get rejected by his love interest because the Chad Dracula is coming by. What makes me even more frustrated, as in plenty of interviews, the guy basically acted like he was too good to be in this film. Now, sure, he did have a pretty reasonable filmography, but even his Wikipedia page basically says, best remembered for Dracula. Now, Lugosi, I mean, people way more talented than I am 
can explain why he was so amazing in Dracula, and he was a talented villain actor. From White Zombie to Murders in the Rue Morgue to The Black Cat and the Raven, Lugosi was a man far more talented than most of the people around him. And in this, his most remembered role, he's outstanding. I mean, even my friends who do not watch these kind of films can mention how Lugosi just stays with them in their head. Do I really need to explain the plot? Okay, here's the abridged version. Renfield is apparently a home salesman who travels all the way to Transylvania from England to sell Dracula a house. Because I guess Dracula is bored of the women bloody he's got there or something. Also, did salesmen really travel all that way to make a sale? I mean, that just sounds like... If, like, he was like, oh no, I don't want the house. You just made that huge-ass trip for nothing, you know? Renfield doesn't last the night. Dracula tells his harem to fuck off. This one's his, like a pimp, and puts him under his control and they go back to England. Renfield is found in the ship that only Dracula and him survived in. And one of my favorite smaller moments of the film is in this moment here. Dracula meets with his next intended victims at a play. And the rest of the film is basically Mina not wanting to do anything to keep herself safe. Harker yells, Mina, Mina, a few times. Renfield is constantly escaping the mental asylum. And Van Helsing and Dracula have a few moments of mental chess. I will not go into the ending, not because of spoilers on a nearly 90-year-old film, but just because I want you to experience it for yourself. But the film's main strength is in its character, not really the plot. Soundtrack? Is there a soundtrack? Well, yeah, there is the opening piece, a song from Swan Lake, I think it was. But that's basically it. At the time, it was thought that an audience couldn't handle music dialogue at the same time. Looking at you, Sonic Adventure 2. Now, there is a score that's optional that was done, I believe, in the 90s by a man named Philip Glass. But I honestly forget it exists most of the time, and I remember just thinking it was alright. I can't sing this film's praises any more than I already have. The film is great, and I recommend anybody remotely interested to find the film. Unlike the 2000s when I first started looking, the film is pretty available on YouTube and stuff. I mean, to purchase. And also, I'm not a rat or anything. But somehow, a Twitch VOD has been up on the film for a few years now. No fucking idea how it hasn't been removed yet, I won't give a link to it. And I will say the film is worth buying, but I guess that's an option. I personally own the Universal Horror Collection box set on Blu-ray, so I have all the films, which I then ripped onto a hard drive, where, which is where all the screen caps and any footage I used is saved. Gotta make sure my fair use video is not making money on it, yet is visible to you guys without Universal banning it, because it uses footage from a nearly 90 year old film. But you know, there can just be a Twitch stream up for a few years of the whole movie. Seems fair. Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for watching the video. If you could, it would mean the world to me if you would like the video and if you're new to the channel, maybe subscribe. I do all kinds of different types of content, mostly revolved around games, but there's other, other stuff too. And if you're interested in horror movie reviews, I already have uh, King Kong, which was my first scripted video I did, as well as a Godzilla video. I also wanted to let you guys know that on Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time, there will be a stream of a public domain horror film, and I'll get some of my friends to come and help me co commentate on it. I'm pretty sure it's going to be White Zombie, but, you know, things might change. Either way, I want to thank you guys again so much for watching the video, and have a good day. Have a good one, guys. Peace out.